and minor stroke patients, uh, there is a still a dilemma whether minor stroke patients should be treated or not treated. Uh, but we should be. Uh, uh, but recent studies say that these minor stroke patients can also later turn to be a full blown stroke. So minor stroke also should be treated. And the aspect so aspect score that is it is a CT score in uh, ischemic stroke. When the CT score is less than three, they also do poorly with TPA. And patients who are already on this dual anticoagulant therapy, they also we should be very cautious in uh, TPA. So coming to what is aspects, this score is very very important, particularly in any ischemic stroke patient who come uh, within the time window. We need not delay in taking MRI. We can straight away go to CT brain, which is which is now now very uh, available in uh, many hospitals, and this may give a, a clue whether patient falls in with a, a good uh, aspect score or poor aspect score, and whether he will have a good prognosis or a bad prognosis. So, uh, what is aspects? It is the uh, it is a Alberta Stroke Program Early CT Score. It is a ten-point quantitative topographic CT scan score. It assesses the early ischemic changes on pre-treatment CT studies in patients with acute ischemic stroke, particularly of the anterior circulation. Anterior circulation, in the sense. Uh, particularly in the keratic circulation, particularly in the middle cerebral artery, and uh, particularly in the middle cerebral artery. But these uh, patients uh, in the posterior circulation uh, cannot be uh, categorized in this aspect score. So, this is a CT image. So, this aspect score uh, considers two levels one is the ganglionic level, CT brain at the ganglionic level. Other is a supraganglionic level. So in the ganglionic level, the chordate we take account the chordate, insular cortex, internal capsule, and thalamus. So these four regions, also along with the frontal, temporal, and parietal M1, M2, and M3. So at ganglionic level, we have seven uh, regions, and in the supraganglionic level, we have three regions. That is higher region, supraganglion. M4, M5, and M6. So this is frontal, parietal, and occipital. So any hypotensities in this region, it will uh, take one point. So for example, if a hypotensity is seen in the insular cortex, the chordate, and internal internal capsule, it will be around three. The score will be uh, the the regions involved will be three, and it has to be subtracted from ten. So it is seven. So anything. Above seven will have a good prognosis, and anything less than seven will have a bad prognosis. So when the regions involved gets more, your prognosis will definitely come down following uh, thrombolysis. So this uh, we can prognosticate the patient, and we can uh, gauge the outcome following TPA. So as I told, there are two levels. One is the basal ganglia level, where thalamus, basal ganglia, and chordate are. Taken into account, and the second level is uh, uh, the supraglandic level, which includes the coronary data and central seminovia. So to compute the aspect score, one point is subtracted from ten for any evidence of early ischemic change for each of the defined regions. A normal CT scan will have an aspect score of ten. A score of zero indicates there is a diffuse entire involvement of the middle cerebral artery. So a sharp increase in dependence and death occurs when the aspect score falls below seven. So uh, how does the TPA act? Uh, the TPA binds to fibrin in the thrombus and it converts the plasminogen to plasmin, so that it initiates a local fibrinolysis with minimal systemic effects. So we are. Uh, under uh, this TPA, there is a three TPAs are there. One is uh, alteplase, direct place, and rectal place. Out of this, this alteplase is only <coughs> FDA approved uh, for thrombolysis in stroke. And there are studies where direct place is also being uh, used in uh, stroke, similar to MI patients. 
but still now all the places only uh, FDA approved and the American Stroke Association endorses uh, all the places in acute uh, stroke, ischemic stroke. Now, all the place is cleared rapidly from circulating plasma by the liver. It is more than 50% is cleared within 5 minutes after infusion and 80% is cleared within uh, 10 minutes. And this alti place is uh, given as an infusion uh, over 1 hour uh, and 10% uh, uh, is given as bolus and remaining is given as an infusion. So how does this alti, alti place act? This is the coagulation pathway. It mainly acts uh, in the, uh, the that is, it's a plasminogen activator and it converts this plasminogen to active form of plasmin and this plasmin lyses the fibrin uh, thereby causing fibrinolysis and the clot is dissolved. So it acts in the final pathway. So, uh, so what are the inclusion criteria for giving a DPA in ischemic stroke patient? It should be a definitive ischemic stroke. There should be no hemorrhage in the CT scan. So uh, if, CT is, if CT doesn't show any hemorrhage, probably it is an ischemic stroke. And the uh, patient should have a measurable neurological deficits. This uh, disabling neurological deficits, we have a score called NIH score. Uh, under this score, we label the patient as mild, moderate and severe. Any score less than 8 is mild, 8 to 15 is moderate and more than 15 is uh, severe uh, stroke under the National Institute of Health for uh, stroke scale, NIHSS. So acute ischemic stroke presenting within 4 and a half hours of stroke symptom onset should be taken into the inclusion criteria. So what are the exclusion criteria? So any active internal bleeding we cannot do thrombolysis. Uh, bleeding, any patient who has a bleeding diathesis with a platelet pump less than 1 lakh, patient who is on heparin and he has received heparin within 48 hours, he cannot be taken up. A patient who is on oral anticoagulant, particularly barfarin or acetrom, with an INR of more than 1.7. And patient who is on direct thrombin inhibitors, <coughs> uh, these are all the uh, uh, exclusion criteria. And any significant head trauma or stroke in the previous three months, uh, any suffer, symptoms suggesting of subarachnoid hemorrhage, arterial puncture, any recent arterial puncture at a non compressible site in the previous seven days, history of previous intracerebral hemorrhage, neoplasm, <coughs> vascular malformations or aneurysm, and recent intracranial or intraspinal surgery, these are all contraindications. And when, uh, when CT shows, when any stroke patient coming to the emergency and CT shows a multilobar infarction, that is high potency involving more than one third of central hemisphere, uh, it is better to avoid uh, uh, thrombolysis because bleeding risk is very high. So that these are absolute exclusion criteria and relative exclusion criteria, the physician can decide whether uh, thrombolysis can be given or not depending on the risk benefit ratio. So minor or rapidly improving stroke symptoms, which are clearing, uh, it is coming under later, but still there is a dilemma because patient who is having a mild uh, speech disturbance, aphasia or a mild uh, unsteadiness, they later can get turned into a complete evolved stroke. So today still there, there is a debate, and uh, but recent studies show that these patients should also be included for thrombolysis. In pregnancy, uh, it comes under relative exclusion criteria and uh, pregnancy more uh, uh, like uh, endovascular uh, removal of clot, these are better in consider considering uh, the risk for thrombolysis. And any major surgery or trauma within past 40 days, uh, any recent uh, gastrointestinal urinary tract hemorrhage within the 21 days, a recent MI within the past, thing, these are all uh, relative criteria. So, uh, the evidence of TPA, these are the studies which endorse giving uh, TPA. Out of this, the first trial is the NINDS trial, which is funded by FDA, FDA and it was uh, 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 it, it came in 1995, and since then, this uh, TPA has been uh, given in acute ischemic stroke. 
And the second important study is the ECAS, European Cooperative Acute uh, Stroke Study, uh, ECAS 3 study. This is very promising, it uh, came in 2009 and uh, I will elaborate this study. So ECAS 3, uh, European Cooperative Acute Stroke Study, this was published in New England Journal of Medicine in 2008. So the objective uh, to assess the efficacy and safety of, of RTP uh, recombinant tissue plasma agent activator between three and four and a half hours after stroke onset. The prior to this study, uh, thrombolysis was done only within three hours, and after this study, thrombolysis time window was extended up to four and a half hours. So the primary endpoint they uh, uh, endpoint was <coughs> disability at day 90. Uh, they assessed by the modified ranking score less than one which is a favorable and modified ranking score 2 to 6 is unfavorable. And these are secondary endpoint and the safety endpoint uh, was uh, mortality at 90 days, any intracerebral hemorrhage or symptomatic intracerebral hemorrhage. So the primary endpoint, disability at 90 days, uh, patients who were uh, uh, thrombolyzed who received alteplase, uh, they had a favorable outcome the V value was 0 0.04. The modified ranking score 0, 1 and 2 which indicates this uh, ranking, modified ranking score is nothing but uh, this uh, disability scale. Patients who are 0 and 1, they have, don't have any disability and they are able to carry out the activities of daily living. 2 is a mild disability but still they are able to carry out the activities, 3 is moderate disability, they need support of their activities or daily living and 4 and 5 they are bedridden and 5 is incontinent, vegetative state and 6 is death. So uh, following this alteplase, uh, there was a, uh, when you compare this alteplase and placebo arm, patients in the alteplase had a good MRS score, uh, this is MRS 0 and MRS 1. Combined outcome is around more than 50 percent, while the placebo arm it is less than 50 percent. So the summary of the CCAS three trial: uh, more uh, RTP administered within four and a half hours after stroke on symptom onset is effective, and significantly more patients were uh, benefited. Comparing the mortality, patients in the alteplase arm and placebo arm, mortality at first some days it is only 2.9, in the mortality in placebo arm it is 3.2 and after 8 days to 90 days it is 3.8 and in the placebo arm it is 4.5 and mortality at 90 days it is only 1% and it is slightly it is better 1.7 but the total overall mortality and comparing this RTP and placebo arm, RTP mortality was less when compared to this uh, placebo arm. So only thing, uh, average was high in this uh, uh, RTP place group, it was around 2.14 percent, 2.4 percent and in uh, placebo it was only few percent. So, uh, but comparing the overall mortality, it was uh, low when compared to the placebo arm. So the conclusions. Intravenous RTP initiated within four and a half hours after onset of stroke symptoms is an effective treatment for patients with acute skin stroke who cannot be thrombolyzed within three hours with no relevant increase in intracranial bleeding compared with treatment within three hours. A viable therapeutic option for many patients previously who were excluded <coughs> from thrombolysis since they were out of the time window beyond three hours, uh, it was benefited. So this finding opens a window of opportunity for later arriving stroke patients. However, having more time does not mean that we should take more time. Patients need to be treated as early as possible with RTPA to maximize the benefit. Therefore, networks has to be worked for. Uh, that, therefore, our emergency network have to work very fast. 
So prior to infusion of DPA, blood pressure has to be controlled. So uh, systolic blood pressure should be less than 180 and diastolic should be less than 110. It, it can be controlled uh, with IV medication rather than oral. IV medications, levitalol can be used, but it cannot be used if uh, heart rate is less than 60. Other option, hydrolysing can also be used. So TPA is given as an infusion <coughs> over and over. The dosage is 0.9 mg per kg, maximum dosage is 90 mg. And 10% has to be given as a bolus and remaining as an infusion over one hour. So. Uh, adverse effects of TPA, only minor adverse effects like uh, as I already discussed the hemorrhage which is one of the devastating. And another is angioedema uh, which can be due to TPA. So any uh, can cause swelling of tongue or lips and around 1.3% of population can be susceptible. So you have to assess at 30, 45, 60, some 5 minutes after TPA borders. Once the TPA infusion has finished, the risk of angioedema decreases. And patients on AC inhibitors are particularly high risk of angioedema. So, Seventy-year-old male came with the complaints of <coughs> difficulty in using his left upper limb and inability to walk since 5 p.m. That is, he came within one hour to our right, uh, emergency department. He had a slurry uh, of speech with deviation of mouth. He is not hypertensive. Uh, he had a similar complaint 20 days ago and he recovered. So he had a property history of PAA. On examination, he was conscious. He had a dysarthria. A power in the left upper limb was only 0 by 5. Lower limb was around 3 by 5. And his NIHS score was 10. And he had a facial deviation to right He was a 70 year old male. He had a facial deviation to the right side. And he 
he had left the uh, facial weakness, left side of face was weak, he was at learning of speech. After thrombolizing, he is able to lift his left arm. This is within, in the, he came in the evening uh, around 6 o'clock and he started thrombolysis. And after 2 hours, his power in the left upper limb improved and he was able to hold my hand. And initially, he also had a mild weakness in the left uh, lower limb, but the weakness in the upper limb was more pronounced and it improved after thrombolysis. importance of thrombolysis because time is brain and we have to act very fast and uh, treat the patient. Thank you. What is the upper age limit? The upper age limit? Uh, it is 80 sir, but beyond 80 so we can take a risk and thrombolysis. So how does this compare to thrombectomy? There was some talk on thrombectomy. Thrombectomy, any patient coming in beyond the time window of 4 and a half hours, because we have extended uh, thrombectomy, it can be done up to 6 hours. And a patient who fail to improve after thrombolysis, they can also be taken up for thrombectomy. It should be the major artery. Large vessel of Particularly in the internal carotid artery, stem of the middle central artery, these are the right candidates. Thank you. Thanks. So, now I request uh, Dr. Sridhar, uh, past president, to hand over the certificate of appreciation. Thank <laughs> you. 